Hello, can I just say, this is a very, very sorry bunch of people that have arrived <laughs> to this session. I've got a commissioner there eating a burger. There's people <laughs> eating crisps over here. But anyway, were you all out last night? Yeah. yeah, we were as well. So bear with us for the next 45 minutes. But um, hello and welcome to the UK TV controllers session. Uh, UK TV claims to be the fastest growing channel in the UK at the moment, uh, with loads of money being pumped into commissioning. That's loads of money <laughs> being pumped into commissioning, so listen up. But it also claims, well, it doesn't claim to be, it has a reputation for being quite a, a confusing channel to pitch to. So the point of this session for the next 45 minutes is to try and clarify and simplify that process. Um, you've got three commissioners for the price of one and uh, various other members of the team scattered about in the audience. So this is your session, producers, and your chance to get all of your questions answered. So I'm going to encourage you to ask as many questions as possible, either via the festival app or I will come to you anyway live throughout to take your questions. So please do think of things. Um, it sort of, you know, helps us be a little bit more interactive. So, first of all, Emma Tennant, you are the controller. I am the controller. The controller yes. of UK TV. <laughs> can you just explain, because you've got so many channels under that, that UK TV umbrella, can you just explain the difference between the key three? So Dave, watch and gold, please. Yes, so Dave, watch and gold are three of our sort of premium entertainment channels really on the network and uh, Dave I think as most people know uh, is um, people think of it as a blokes channel it's actually only 55 45 uh, men women uh, it's the biggest what most watched non PSB channel in the UK bigger than Sky One um, we recently uh, increased our commissioning budget year on year by 70% uh, obviously we focus a lot on on um, comedy and comedy entertainment, but we're broadening that out um, with um, this year, we've moved into scripted and more uh, entertainment formats as well. So, um, so that's, that's Dave. Um, Gold, uh, probably the most established uh, digital channel in the UK. It's been around for about 24 years, I think now. Uh, and it really? Yeah, so it's one of the very first out there. Obviously known for the, the very best of British comedy um, but what people might not know about gold is it's uh, it's now actually one of our youngest channels in terms of demographics so uh, it's really doing well for 16 to 34 so they're rediscovering the joy of the comedy uh, of the comedy that we show and also we're now commissioning a lot more on gold so we've got um, we've got um, four commissions um, coming up in the next six months um, brand new scripted dramas, so it was scripted comedies coming. So it's a really exciting time on gold. Uh, Watch is our premium entertainment channel in pay. Um, uh, it's aimed at a slightly more female audience, sort of 50, 50, 52, 50, uh, 48. Um, it's uh, full of uh, great entertainment shows. We've got a really big raft of programming coming in the next, uh, in the next six months or so. Um, including sort of groundbreaking formats like Singing in the Rainforest. There was a preview of that last night. I don't know if people saw it at the, at the film house uh, with Las Vegas performing. Um, we've got uh, a show called Humble Pie, which is a cooking stroke gambling sort of show. <laughs> uh, and uh, um, Honey, I Bought the House and more, and more new, sh new shows coming down well, the line. Well, I mean, there's a big rebrand uh, of Watch happening isn't there which we can talk about later because i know that there's well, a lot of excitement around that. it's not really a rebrand uh the the channel is called watch and will be called watch uh it's a it's a slight repositioning of making sure that we are talking better to our audiences uh and we're more consistent in our communication both uh on screen and off screen um and that um it's sort of Built, and also building up, we've now built up, as I said, we've been working very hard over the last year or so to build a range of content so we can consistently deliver to that audience rather than sort of have a big shout and scream about a couple of things and then go quiet for, right. for three or four months. So we want consistent hits coming through month after month and that's what we've been building towards. You made a decision a couple of years ago to focus commissioning on those three entertainment channels. Why 
did you decide to do that? I mean, I can, I can throw to, to the silent partners in, in the corner if you like. Well, I can, I can I just hear laughter from next door, which worries me. They're having a lot more fun than we are. Yeah, exactly. I think it's difficult when you've got ten channels. You have to prioritise. Uh, it's, it's not quite like children. You don't have to pick your favourites. But you, but you do... Uh, you do have to prioritise and you have to think, well, where can I make the biggest difference, uh, both for my audiences, for our partners in terms of our um, platform partners, um, and for advertisers. So where can I drive uh, the most return for the business? And uh, the entertainment area was the biggest, biggest area for us. And it's obviously been very successful. We had our biggest ever year last year, so we hit 9% uh, share of commercial impacts. And... We're tracking above that this year, above 9.3. So our network of channels is, is growing, where I think every other network is not. So we're very, we're very pleased. The decision's been the right one for us. So justifiably proud. Yes. Now, you have chosen as your channel-defining clip for Dave? Dave. For Dave. Hoff the record. Yes. Uh, let's just have a look before we talk about okay. that anymore. That's, that's a round of applause from me. That's genuinely really, really funny. So why was that such a, a key commission for you? I think it, it, was, it was a big, you know, it was a big step for us. It was going into scripted. Yeah. Um, and I think it was, it's a sort of fairly channel-defining and actually quite network-defining sort of step. Um, it was a move into scripted, which was great. It's massive, you know, internationally renowned talent. Uh, so bringing him to Dave was great. Uh, the structure of the show, which was a you know sort of self-parody um, of, of his character, the Hoff, that, that so you know, sort of David, constructed reality, isn't it? Sort of constructed reality, but a parody of the character. Yeah. You know, which at times you're not sure how much is him and how much is his character. Uh, and of course, so I mean that that's key for you guys that you got. David Hasselhoff to take the piss out of himself in, in that way. Yep. I mean, that's a real coup. Yeah, it was really, yeah. it was really it great for it us. Does rely, it does rely on him being quite complicit, yeah. certainly. I Which mean, clearly he, he's, yeah, he's, he's happy, happy to yeah. do. Yeah. Happy to, yeah. I think also, what it's also done for, for David is slightly change the conversation. So actually, the, the, the critical response to the show was incredible and so, so positive. And actually, it starts getting the journalists talking about our channels in a different ways. So Dave's talking about being a powerhouse original commissioning making shows that are as funny, if not funny, than sort of the terrestrial shows. So it's changed the conversation to being about that. And then when we, you know, we, we then followed that with Undercover, with Taskmaster, Alan Davis, Dave Gorman, buying in shows from the states like Last Man on Earth, uh, Parts and Rec, Suits. It then just starts to move the channel into being a place that's being seen as being new content. So from a brand point of view, it drives us forward. And also, we were having a, a conversation beforehand, weren't we, about the fact that, you know, it, it's really refreshing that you've had a conversation with key talent, known faces, and you're actually saying to them, look, you know, what are you really into? What are you excited about? How can we work with you rather than forcing you into a box? Which, which is incredibly refreshing, I think, certainly from a talent point of view as well. Yeah, I mean, Dave Gorman, Modern Life is Goodish, is Dave Gorman playing to his strengths, doing what he's done for many years, for bringing that to TV in the right format. Uh, Diary and School of Hard Sums we did was something that Dara was massively passionate yeah, about. who knew? You know, so <laughs> I think, you know, going and talking to, to talent, understanding what, what makes them tick. I think if you have a piece of talent on screen who's passionate about what they're doing, that comes across, and it's of much course. better TV. It's much better quality. Well, again, it's about authenticity, isn't it? The fact that you are genuinely getting the real person coming through rather than a sort of, you know, constructed bit of talent in a way. I was going to say, I think the other thing that's really important about this in terms of being a, a channel-defining show is you, I, I hope, at least, you can see that as a network, we're starting to, to kind of define our own tone of voice a little bit more. I, th I think that's incredibly important. And we've already, by focusing on the entertainment channels, we've already simplified that job a little bit because we're commissioning in, a, in, in more kind of specific genres. But I think it's really important as we grow and as we invest more in commissioning that people understand what a UK TV show is. And I think when you see that, you can see it's got a quite a kind of spiky tone. Not everything we do is going to have quite that spiky tone. Not everything we do is going to mention children's nipples. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> but but at the same Brilliant. time, you know, it's just it's just moved the the kind of the tone of voice on for Dave a bit. I think um, you know, as we're not only are we stretching into different genres and trying to kind of increase what Dave does and the number of people that we talk to, but as I say, we're also kind of we're also growing up a little bit as a channel, I think, and, and defining that important tone of voice. And it well, shows that we're prepared to take risks as well. I think, which is a big thing. That's something we're you know we're really keen to do across all of our channels. 
Well, you, your audience are, are clearly really loving it as well because uh, they were sending in, you know, tweets as, as that was going off crazily. So... <laughs> That sounds odd. Um, so, Hoff the Record is the new Father Ted. Hoff the Record is brilliant. Every episode just gets better and better. And Hoff the Record is superb. Love Hasselhoff's ability to take the piss out of himself. Top man. So, you know, yeah, fair enough, I, I think. You've done really, really well to get him to sort of, you know, be a parody mm. of himself. But sort of sticking with, uh, with a bit of light relief, Emma, you know what's coming. Uh, just to keep you on your toes a little bit, we got you to fill out a Q&A about yourself so that we could get an idea of the woman behind the <laughs> controller. So without looking at the PowerPoint, which obviously is right down there as well, let's see if you've been telling us the truth about you. So, Emma, who would you perform as on Stars in Their Eyes? With my body shape, it's got to be Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> I just say that comes a bit too naturally. A that's bit really too well naturally too. Is that, is that well, actually a picture? Is that Photoshop? Is that? I said, that's that is not well photoshopped. Yeah. I can promise you. It's, it's so not photoshopped. Uh, <laughs> who's your pin-up, please? Uh, well, I think I said Daniel Craig, but basically, pretty much any ginger man. I'm quite a sucker for gingers. Are there any ginger men in the room? <laughs> <laughs> any gingers in the audience? I'll find Stand them later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Be afraid. Pitch yes. now. Leave now. <laughs> Uh, and what did you watch from behind the sofa when you were little? Oh, Tales of the Unexpected. Hands up who's old enough to remember that. Everybody, yeah, yeah. terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Correct. <laughs> Bonus Correct. points to you. Um, thank you very much. Moving on to Richard. Uh, let's get into a little bit of, of the nitty-gritty yeah. of commissioning. Your title is Director of <laughs> Commissioning. Yes. I'm wondering, what the hell does that mean? Well, uh, I, I think that's kind of simple, but... Uh, so I, um, I look after the commissioning team, and the, which is more than just uh, commissioning editors, but essentially my job is to, to look after all of our homegrown originations from the moment that they come through the door on a piece of paper through to production, through to, to delivery to Steve's teams who then, who then get out onto air. Uh, so within our team, we've got commissioning editors. We've also got um, the commercial partnerships uh, um, experts, and I, I think we're, I can't remember whether this may come later in the script. We've got some of these people here who I'll introduce you to. So I'm begging if, you, if please don't mess up my script. If, okay, please don't get on. This is coming I'm later so on in the cue cards. Okay. Uh, so, we, so we've got a commercial partnerships team who look after our, our um, kind of brand relationships, and that's a very important part of what we do. We've got the, uh, the kind of production side, so we've got my head of production and production <laughs> manager, and they look after all the budgeting. Uh, and then we've also got the kind of business affairs side. So it's the kind of whole package, really. So you are a very an important man. Not at all. Basically. <laughs> but but, but you, you've got a whole team underneath There is a whole you. team of people, yeah. And there's, there's a, you know, we are, uh, we're a lean company, anyway. Um, across, you know, we, we run 10 channels. That's, that's an awful lot of channels. Yeah. Uh, as well as UK TV Play. But, um, but yeah, no, there, there's a whole team. And we, uh, it's quite important for me that we're also a compact team and we sit closely together. So, for example, the value of having the commercial partnerships team actually with the commissioning editors, that's really unusual and unlike any other broadcaster. And it means that, that, um, that Kate and Sally, who are out there talking to brands and finding out where, where there's money to be invested, know exactly what we're looking for. You know, and that kind of works across the production side and the business affairs side and all those things that we're really kind of linked together. That's important. Can I just ask you to cast your eyes around this room? There's a lot of desperate producers out there. They've got babies to feed. So what are you actually looking for across your three major channels that these people can pitch to you for? Okay. Uh, I, think, I think we probably do things a bit differently from other people in terms of how we brief out, and I think that's quite important to understand. Mm -hmm. So we don't, um, we don't commission to slot. So Steve doesn't kind of... We don't, Steve and I don't sit down. Steve goes, right, I've got, you know, 8 o'clock on a Wednesday in October. I've got to fill it. We, you know, we need X kind of show. Uh, we have the the um, the privilege, I suppose, of of being able to keep our of being able to keep our huge broad net open, and being able to see lots of different ideas. So I'd be much more focused on what we're trying to achieve than what we're actually looking for. So at the same time, each of the channels has a very specific tone and a character which you need to take into in, into account. But actually, it's about it's about what we're trying to do. And what I mean by that is, you know, we are at a very particular place in the market, and I think that there's an enormous opportunity for us. To, to go and make shows that stand out. So I, I feel 
lucky that you know if we go and do a drama on Dave, and we've talked about doing a drama and looking for a drama now, that that will be talked about quite quickly. If mm. they go and do a, a new drama on BBC One, and no one will bat an eyelid. So I want to make use of that. That's an enormous advantage for us, that we can go and make shows that feel like a coup. So the bottom line for me with everything that we do is that I, I want people to, to look at that show and to think, that's changed. That's changed my perception of what I think about UK TV. That's, you know, I didn't, I didn't think they'd do that. That's, you know, it feels bigger, it feels cleverer or better quality than I thought it would be. So challenging, ambition, you were talking about, uh, you know, growing up in a sense. So really yes. you're talking about scale and attractive yeah, attention. Scale, yeah, and I think it's really important that we are absolutely seen not just as a, as more than just a credible alternative to, to the PSBs. We're actually an exciting alternative, somewhere where people can, can come and they will get given the same amount of money to make the same kind of show that they would if they were doing it on BBC One or Channel 4. And that actually, there's enormous freedom in that. We can go then and do different things that people and talent, we were talking about talent earlier on, they don't get the opportunity to do that on other channels. And they come and talk to us, because actually, yeah. Dara Brian School of Hard Sums, you know, we, who knew, you know, as you said, we would, we would never have briefed out and said, right, we're looking for a, we're looking for a mass yeah. comedy show. Because and it works we would never so well one. as yeah. well, doesn't so it? So we kind of kept the net wide, actually, and thought, well, what does this do for us? Well, it's incredibly quirky and unusual. You know, it's got, it's got Dara behind it, and we know that he's doing something that's incredibly passionate about, so he's going to give it his all, and it, and it, and it really worked. Well, I know that, that we do have another clip that, that we're going to be talking about, uh, and this is something that you took a punt on isn't it? And, and sort of worked, but at the same time was tricky for you. Just, just explain a little bit more about what we're about to see. Okay, so we, we did, uh, so, um, so Jamie Isaacs, a Liberty uh, Bell, who was already, we were already working with, making the brilliant Dave Gorman show, came to me uh, when shortly after Al Murray had announced that he was standing for Parliament, for election. And, um, and there was an opportunity there to do a one-off uh, uh, kind of feature length show, which is quite unusual for us and on, you know, on Dave. We don't tend to do one-offs because marketing is very important for us yep. and we need really a series to be able to put significant marketing money behind it. We also tend not to do things that are overly topical because it's really important that we can, we can show things again okay. um, in order to, you know, we, we view our audiences differently. We view our audiences across a number of, a number of um, showings. Uh, and so it felt, that felt like quite a risk. It was also quite last minute, of course. And we were trying to blend a kind of mockumentary and a fictional side to the story with real events that were completely out of our control. So in the same way that Al is there in, in real life as a, as, a, um, as a parody, as a character kind of reacting to what's going on, actually the whole crew are also having to go, oh my God, what is this film now? Yeah. We're gonna have to, now we're going to have to go and do this, we're going to have to go and do that, and it's got to be delivered in two or three days. So it felt like quite a big risk for us. At the same time, it was a really fantastic opportunity. A really good example, I think, of something that feels like a coup. You know, very respected, well-known talent doing something that felt very unusual Risky. in a high-profile story that, that, you know, that got national coverage uh, and the show was very well received and got great press. So. Let's take a look. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, as I understand, I mean, you know, very brave commission, very, very funny. The numbers were a little bit down, is that right? Well, we, we, you know, it was a risky commission on a, on a number of fronts. First of all, we'd never, we'd always avoided election nights in the past on Dave for good reason. Understandably, yeah. Uh, but, you know, we had no idea what the competition was going to be like on other channels, and that was, it was quite significant. But actually, the thing that really scuppered the, the, um, the premiere showing was the, was the exit poll news. So it came out just as the show was starting. And I think generally all of the uh, entertainment channels suffered as everyone kind of flocked to the news. However, you know, the way that we would view the success of a show is across a week's run, really. And this show went out four times across a week and it was seen by just under a million people, I think. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's a really good number for us. That's so a really good number. Sorry, I was going to say, it's also kind of really important, but I think one thing we want to do on Dave as well, moving forward as much as possible, is, is to engage our audiences and find ways of making the, the channel feel current and have some currency to it. So that might be through social media, through marketing, but also through our programming. So having that ability to have not an opinion on the, on the election, but having a voice that goes on at the same time was really important. And we're never going to do what BBC One or ITV or even Channel 4 do the election. So this is a way in which we could bring that kind of tone of voice and a bit of fun in, to, to the proceedings and what's going on around us. So the biggest news event of the year, we wanted to make sure that Dave was had some kind of sense of involvement within that. So this is your chance now to sell yourselves to everybody here, because why should producers come and give you their best 
ideas. I think, you know, traditionally, UK TV has been seen as, you know, the place to go to if, if the major channels have sort of turned the ideas down. It's far down the EPG. There's not enough money, et cetera, et cetera. So why should we be bringing our very well, best I, ideas? I think, th I think things are changing. Now, the, the, the commissioning world environment is absolutely changing. There are a number of quite um, uh, well-known, established companies that tell me, and maybe they're just flattering me, as they would to any commissioner, but tell me that they bring, them, bring us their best ideas first. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, as I said before, it's, it's about being more than just a credible alternative to other people. Mm. This is actually, uh, we're an alternative where people can come and make shows they can't ma make elsewhere. I mean, that's, that's enormously empowering, I think, for talent. And there and is that producers. misconception around, around budgets, because as Richard said, we, we don't, uh, we, we will pay the same as, uh, as terrestrials. We pay what the show deserves. So it's about the ambition of the show and the ambition of the channel that's going to go on. Um, so we'll work very closely with, with producers to make sure it's got the right budget. Now, sometimes we might work at trimming it a bit, but at times we've said, actually, we think you need to put some more money in this because to make it what we all want it to become, it needs a bit more investment, and we'll put it, we'll put it into the show. Which so is tremendously exciting, I think. But you we, know don't, we don't have a tariff at UKTV, so we don't really work to tariffs. It's about what's the idea, what, what budget does the idea need to make it really sing, and then, and then we'll work with you. And also, I think it's been evidenced by, uh, by the, the rela hopefully the relationships that we have with the producers, but also by the way we market and PR the programming we have. We support the programming as well. So we, we do very innovative marketing and stunts and PR around the show. So we'll take an idea and we'll nurture it right from the moment you bring it in the door to getting it onto air. I'm thinking of a chocolate Benedict Cumberbatch. Is that, is that that's part of the marketing strategy? Is that just a dream? That <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. that, that was a PR. Yeah. That was a PR that stunt. So but yeah, full-size chocolate Benedict Cumberbatch in uh, in Westfield. Uh, for um, that was for the launch of drama onto play at Easter. So uh, you, you're saying why should people come to us? I think yeah. actually, the, so the, another example of a kind of a, of a really successful PR stunt was around the Pythons. I think that's a really interesting case of what of people who who you absolutely wouldn't expect or have expected to see it on UK TV a couple of years ago. But, they, but we talked to them quite early on before they did their last show at the O2, and we, we ended up doing a brilliant deal with them that I think they, they were enormously pleased with. For the, for the Pythons, we created, when I say we, Zoe and her brilliant team, uh, created a 15-metre-long dead parrot that, we, oh, that, that hit all the papers. Yeah. Sorry, that changed. It's, it's still not going alive. That. There, it's like, oh, crikey, that's amazing. Uh, and uh, which the top half of which, because we couldn't fit it in the office, but the top half of which, <laughs> the head, from the kind the of office. shoulders up, is still sitting yeah. in the office. But you know, those off things were really well. Off the record, we did a Leicester Square launch for it, so we had red carpet in Leicester Square. On top of that, we had you know huge amounts of, of billboards, press campaign, TV advertising, a lot of TV channels. We've got 30 million uh, reach now of, of viewers. Um, the chocolate count there, bunch, bunch. Uh, we had yeah, 30 million people got to watch our channels across a month, so we, we pushed to them, social digital. So that, so that support, tremendous support we give tremendous exposure. is really important, I think, yeah. into getting things to cut through. Now, we, we know that, that you've got a whole team working below you, mm. so can you just make yourselves known? Here in the you're audience. On. They're not. They're not below me. They're alongside. Yeah, me. Alongside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> and actually, I think there's something. You know, again, you're saying you're asking why producers should come and work with us. I think this, these guys are why you should come and work with us because we've we've got a fantastic team at UK TV of people who've made shows. Yes, and so of course. They under, They absolutely understand. We've all pitched to commissioning editors and know how frustrating it can be. We've all, you know, struggled late at night trying to make a budget work or whatever it might be. They've, we've all had those experiences, and uh, everything I've heard from producers uh, over the last couple of years is that is that we're a good team to work with and that we're collaborative. And I, I've heard that as well. I've done a straw but, poll. Know, People are genuinely it's really saying it's a pleasure to, to work with you. But who um, yeah, so are I, you? So, <laughs> So we've got. So I'm going to ask them to, to stand up because we're embarrassing ourselves. They should embarrass themselves. Exactly. Up. So we've got Ian Coyle here, who's, who's, uh, who looks after a lot of our comedy. Uh, we've got we've got Victoria here. Um, Summer. So Victoria's going to stand. Up. She is a commission executive. She looks after a lot of our back end. Uh, who else have we got in the room? We've got Kate Norum over here, who is our um, commercial partnerships manager. Who, as I said, sits within the commissioning team. She looks after a lot of the relationships with brands. Hillary, Hillary. Uh, and we've got uh, lovely Hilary Rosen there, who's our deputy director of commissioning. Uh, who uh, looks after lots of a uh, panoply of different things from scripted to fashion. Panoply? I've not heard panoply since this morning. That's amazing. I, uh, anyway, and, I, and I was hoping that we've got, had, we'd have Simon Lupton here, but 
He, I don't think he's made it. Anyway, but Simon... He's Lupton, not made it Simon to his own Lupton. session. <laughs> so Simon, Simon Lupton used to work at UKTV, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Exactly. We've had to let him go. Um, you can tweet that out now. He's um, in the laughter session looks, next door. <laughs> exactly. I thought I'd recognise that off. He looks after a lot of our scripted uh, um, content. But actually, the way that we work, you know, we all look after different things. So even though Simon is our kind of scripted expert, uh, Hillary looks after Crack and Ori. Um, Ian looked after Hoff the Record. So we, you know, we, we mix things up. Uh, th is this is also a really good uh, time to mention that there are networking drinks going on in 15 minutes uh, outside across the hall if you want to come and speak to those people who've just stood up, raised their hands, and they are the people to go and stalk in about 15 minutes' time. Uh, but in the meantime, I know that, that there have been some questions uh, coming in, certainly on the app, so thank you for that. But also, I want to take some live one so if you've got any questions that, that you want to ask our team here or indeed in the audience can you just raise your hand please tell me somebody wants to ask a question mm -hmm. really no, in that case i'm going to go to the app okay oh what is the rights position that you guys take on commissions the rights position uh, so our, our standard rights position is, is we work in a very collaborative way with producers. Our standard rights, right, standard rights position is that we share the back end 50-50. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the way we operate. It seems very equitable. Uh, it works very well with a, with a lot of producers. Uh, as I say, we bring a lot of other things to the, to the table. We're not, we're not governed by terms of trade, uh, as the PSBs are. Um, at the same time, we bring a lot of marketing and a lot of love and a lot of passion uh, to projects. Uh, and a lot of publicity to projects uh, that they don't. And as I said, that's, that's worked very well for us across all the, all the projects that we're doing. This is, um, actually there's a couple of interesting ones here. I, I want to ask, is development funding available on Dave? I think that's really important. Development funding is available on, on every, not just on Dave, but all the channels that we commission on. So when I took over this job a couple of years ago, it seemed, you know, we didn't, at the time we didn't have a kind of structured development plan so we've, we've uh, agreed internally that we set aside a certain significant pot of money that has uh, grown uh, quite a lot this year from last year uh, to develop lots of different things, whether it's scripts, uh, whether it's um, casting tapes, lots, lots of stuff. And actually, I think we've got, um, we worked this out the other day, we've got more than 50 things either in production or paid development currently. So there's plenty of stuff going on. Which I think is, is going to be music to the ears of many people here because there's nothing worse than having sort of endlessly developed stuff up you know, for free, the fact that you have got that pot available, I, I think is, you know, absolutely crucial. Um, Richard, you know what's coming next, because I, I, I'm also aware that, that we're slightly running out of time, but you know what is coming next. It's your fun facts. Great. So uh, we also got you to fill out a, a Q&A about yourself. Uh, so who would you perform as on Stars in Their Eyes? So I, said, I wrote this on the train the way out. I think I said Sia, because I just quite like the idea of having a bag <laughs> over my head. <laughs> I thought that would make the photoshopping easier, too. <laughs> uh, um, what's the most embarrassing item in your wardrobe? Uh, I, do you know what? I've got, I have a number of children, um, four being that number. What's in your wardrobe? Yeah. Frankly, <laughs> no, no, frankly, I'm, I'm more worried about what's in their wardrobes than mine. That's just what happens when you've got a lot of kids. I don't really... My well, wardrobe I, I was just going to... On, on that note, word on the street is that you are the most fertile man in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, I'm sitting between, well, away. You know, away, yeah. well away from you. <laughs> So this is, I mean, it's everywhere. All the women are talking about it. <laughs> four kids. And two I of them were an accident, kids, yeah. weren't they? We're an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a lot of, there's a lot of chat. There's a lot of chat so going I've on. Now got, I've now got uh, an 11-year-old who, who probably could pick up social media, so please don't tweet that out. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Um, uh, no, they weren't actually, but the last two were twins. So, yes, yeah, so we went from two to four. I cried. <laughs> Tears of joy Genuinely and pain wet. simultaneously. <laughs> Thank you very much. Steve, we'd better bring you in because you've been sitting so patiently at the end. Yeah. But you Where are the general manager for Dave Watch and Gold, which I've got to be honest, sounds like you should be running Sports Direct. Nice. <laughs> um, you know. Do you know what I get? I get lots of job offers coming through for things well, like Nando's. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. I was like, really? General yeah. manager? Um, what do you do? Uh, so what do I do? So um, I guess... Fundamentally, my responsibility is, is the overall kind of performance of the channels, so both commercially and creatively. So making sure we're hitting targets, getting the ratings in that we need, that's generating the revenue to deliver the profit back to shareholders, but also at the same time growing the brands uh, and making sure that from a long-term perspective, they're kind of salient in the moving forward. So it's working with Emma, isn't my boss, so that's an easy one. How I work with Emma, I, get to, I do what I'm told. But working you know, incredibly closely with Richard, so we spend 
you know, we are every day we're talking together basically about the project. That's why we wear the same shoes. Why we are wearing yeah, the same shoes, same merging. trousers. We were wearing the same jackets, but Richard took his off because he was getting embarrassed. <laughs> um, on, on what we need, what's coming through, what budgets we've got, how much we've got to spend, what kind of shows we need to come, come through in the channels. Similar conversations with the acquisitions teams, then running the schedules to make sure that they're pulled together with that content in the right places, looking after the marketing, make sure we're then supporting that content the right way, how we're splitting those budgets between our brand messages and appointment reviews, similar conversations with PR, running the, the digital and social. So it's bringing all those aspects of the channel together to make sure there's consistency and it's all going in the right direction. I'm thinking complex. Is what I'm it's just, yeah, just lots of different bits He's of made it sound really complicated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> like to make himself sound busy. Anything. Absolutely yeah. busy is what I am, Anna. I'm a boss busy. on the stage. I'm sound busy. Uh, you've had some tremendously good headlines, actually. So let, let's talk about some of those press headlines and, and see if there's any truth behind them. So there's a story up there about uh, record profits for UK TV. Does this mean that the commissioning budgets have increased as well? Uh, yes, uh, simply. We right. put, so Dave this year was spending 7% more uh, money on, on original commission than we were last year. Looking across, actually Dave Gold and Watch collectively, or individually actually, they've got 7% more commissioned hours this year than they had last year. Dave is up 140% on two years ago. So as we've you know, grown the, the network and delivered more profit to the shareholders, we've been incredibly successful about getting them to release more money back into our budgets. And, and I think that's a, it's an ongoing spiral. So as we get more money to spend on more shows, bigger shows, uh, more hours in the schedule, that drives even more growth, more money coming in, we can then go and get more of that money to put back. So we've been really successful in, in using that money we've made and just putting it back into back into content. The shareholders have been very supportive in in uh, supporting our, our ambitions for growth and and our commissioning strategy. So that, that's been fantastic. Okay. If you look at Dave, this last twelve months, four of the five biggest shows on the channel have been commissioned. So uh, what Taskmaster, Dave Gorman uh, storage storage hunters and uh, soapbox, oh, uh, the soapbox, um, Rebel soapbox race. So they're all being, you know, they're the big shows that are driving growth and success on the channel. So it makes it a much easier story for us to, to persuade people so to put it, more money back in. Exactly, and it genuinely is an exciting time, isn't it, for yeah. UK TV? Is, is it true that you're biting at biting at the heels in inverted commas uh, of Channel Five? Is that right? Yeah, well, the, the network. So UK TV as a network is is actually now bigger than the Channel Five portfolio of channels. We are on par with Sky portfolio channels. We're not very far behind. I don't think the Channel 4's portfolio now in total. The so first quarter of this year, or first third of this year, we beat Sky's portfolio of wholly owned channels. So anything with the Sky branded name, including their movies and news and sport, our network beat their network. We're beating, which is, you know, so huge. Congratulations. We're very proud of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Rightly so, actually. Right, rightly so. And actually, on an individual basis, you know, Storage Hunters does 1.3 million. Love Soap Storage Box. Hunters. Soapbox <laughs> Race did three quarters of a million for us. Uh, Dave Gorman does sort of nothing up to 700,000, 550 for Taskmaster. So on an individual basis, we've got shows that can now compete with, you know, Channel 5 shows or ch even Channel 4 and BBC2, you know, Red Dwarf, we brought it back a couple of years ago, two and a half million viewers watching that yeah. show. You know, that is a show that is able to completely compete against any terrestrial or multi-channel product. But because you've got more money, because you are uh, growing up and becoming more successful, are you able to take more risks then? I mean, I know you've talked a little bit about that, but you're happy to take risks. Yeah, it, it's a balance. You know, we, we do things that we, we believe will, will work very well for us. We know we'll do ratings. So Storage Hunters UK is a great example of that. But also then that allows us to then take risks on the big projects like Undercover, mm. like Off the Record, mm. um, and on Watch, big shows like Sing the Rainforest. You know, Sing the Rainforest is a, is a massively ambitious show, uh, incredibly ambitious show, but we're able to take those risks because we have other great content that can deliver ratings for us. And it's about finding that balance. I'm just keeping uh, an eye on time because I know I really want to see the clip from, from uh, Singing in the Rainforest. But first of all, let's have your fun facts, Oh, you can just move on from that if you want to. Then we <laughs> I'm really, I know, no, I think that this is quite crucial. So uh, let's have a look at the fun uh. facts. No peeking at the slide. <laughs> uh, have you borrowed Lovely. Emma's suit? I, I literally have, clearly, yeah. <laughs> you literally have. Uh, so what would be your specialist subject if you went on Mastermind, please? Uh, I think I said brass band history, 1980s to 90s or something. Tragic. I know, it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> Is that true? It's true, yeah. It's I used to play in brass bands, yeah, You as enjoy a child. this, Matt? That's incredible. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and for a bonus point, Steve, what's the name of the band which inspired the film Brassed Off, starring Ewan McGregor? Okay, um, the, well, in the film, I think it was like Grimly, um, real, real life, because it's based on a true story, it was Grimethorpe Collie Brass Band. 
Um, Sorry, but can you repeat? Grimethorpe Colliery was the real band in real life, and I know that. Here's a really I told sad Steve fact. Steve, it wasn't going to help if he corrected the no. film. It's, it's not, not going to make just him look a, any Just better, to you really I mean. labour the point was because it's based on a true story of when they won the National Brass Band Championship. Am I seriously having this conversation? We are, um, and I know because I played in that, that, that same competition. So did you really? I did, yeah, yeah. So you are you are there a sort of brass aficionado. You go, what, what do you play? 20, 20, 30 years ago, yeah, yeah. No, Never no, too no, late. That isn't a risk taker. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's risk right there. Uh, okay, let's uh, move okay. on from that. Let, yeah. yeah, let's move on from that. I'm just going to skip out a little bit, actually, actually yeah, Richard, no, and move nice. straight on to Emma. Just talk about the future specifically of Watch, um, because there's a lot of talk in the industry, as, as we were saying earlier on, about how you're moving it forward. So, what are you growing it into now? Well, it's not it's not uh, really changing significantly. That it's still a, a broad an entertainment channel uh, aimed at sort of as I said, slightly more at female audience. Um, it's about a sort of smart entertainment. Um, so we've got, um, as I said, a really broad range of shows coming through with, with Singing in the Rainforest, um, Humble Pie, Honey, I Bought the House. Um, we've brought shows like uh, Secrets and Lies, The Strain, season two premiered last night. We've got Grimm coming this autumn. So it's, it's a really sort of big entertainment uh, channel. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about singing in the rainforest. Yeah. Uh, should we take a, a look at the clip first? That'd be great. Okay. It's like running into uh, me in the middle of the jungle. Uh, uh, but there's always one way in every group. And in, in our group, it's me. And in their group, it was him. You try and be You be, you be, yeah, yeah. Se me quedó aquí. Este nunca se me va a olvidar. I was in Apocalypse Now. The only thing was missing was the acid. Although looking at Bez sort of reminded me a bit of it. Cut a cross. Thank you. Mental. <laughs> <laughs> That is mental. I, I love the fact that Sean Ryder is, is genuinely saying it reminds me of Apocalypse Now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is ambition. That is crazy. Uh, I genuinely applaud you for that because it looks thoroughly entertaining. Taking the Happy Mondays to Panama was definitely <laughs> not a challenge. If that, doesn't say, if that doesn't say risk taking. I don't know what it does. <laughs> yeah, no, happy absolutely. Mondays in South America. Um, now, Steve, I, I know, I'm just wondering what we should do. So, Nikki, do you want me to, to play the final clip or should we go into questions? Uh, well, yeah. Okay, so Steve, I, I know that, that you are genuinely tremendously proud of, of our very last clip as well. Can you just fill us in a little bit more about it, please? Uh, I could have only was. Oh, oh really? <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry? Marley's going to come out. Oh, Marley. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't <laughs> Shall realize I ask that clip? question again? We're Steve, I know you're genuinely really proud right, okay. of your final <laughs> clip. <laughs> yes. What is it? Uh, it's a clip of Marley's Ghost. So, uh, <laughs> this is the new, uh, new scripted comedy for, for Gold. So, we've been doing. Yeah, as we've been talking about a lot of scripted comedy. So Marley's Ghost, we've got another show called Bull coming through, uh, a one-off called Do Not Disturb. So from a talent point of view, you know, the likes of uh, Sarah Alexander and Nicholas Burns, um, Joe Joyner, John Hanna, but also coming through another show, so Robert Lindsay, Maureen Lippman, uh, Matt Lucas. Uh, we've got uh, um, uh, Catherine Tate. Um, so incredible kind of talents coming yeah. through now, and, and that's currently coming through onto Gold. There'll be more kind of new comedies coming through into next year as well. So I think this is a little clip of, of Miles Glow, which will be the, the first show that kind of goes to air. Let's have a look. Let me get this right. You think you can see the dead? Yeah, not all of them, just two of them. Two really annoying ones. 
What do you want me to do? I want you to get rid of them. Oh. No, well, I'm not sure if I... Look, you're a vicar. You understand these things. Isn't there some sort of biblical chant you can use? Confront them with a prayer? Fine. Well, what sort of prayer? Oh, I don't know. Uh, begone, foul devils of the damned? <sighs> not saying that. Well, just tell them to bugger off, you know, in your vicary way. And they're both at your house now, are they? Yes. Yes, they are. It's quite comfy, your house, isn't it? What? Your house. It's got that great big widescreen television. What's that got to do with anything? I'm sorry, we need to take it down to the morgue now. The what? I died about an hour ago. But that was just a bump. Oh, sorry, there was complications. You could be soft furnishings as well, aren't you? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That is very funny. Um, do you know, I was going to sort of throw to the floor for questions, but we have got the networking drinks now anyway, and we are genuinely out of time. So uh, it just remains for can me I, to can say... I say one tiny little thing? No, we're that, out okay. of time. Oh. So that's it, no. <laughs> no, I just want to say that I didn't really get a chance to, to kind of talk through the individual needs of the channels. Yes. There, are, there is obviously a bit more detail I can give people about the, about the channels. I would say come to the networking drinks. If you can't come to that, you know, you've at least seen some of the team. Come and see us. Uh, give us a shout. If you're not in London, give us a call. We can, we can brief people over the phone. But obviously, there's, the way we work is you, you need to have a lot more information from us in order to be able to pitch to us well, I think. So just start talking to us. It'll be great. Fantastic. Thank you so much to Emma, Richard and Steve. And thank you, everybody here, for being actually a real pleasure to, uh, to be a part of. So thank you very much. And yeah, thank you. catch you afterwards.